for joining us again today. Today we're going to talk about transistors. So the new component on our bench is a transistor. A transistor is like a switch, but instead of using a physical toggle, it uses a trigger current to close the circuit. Let's see what happens when we include this component in an LED control circuit. So check this out. When I turn on my battery, I can use my fingers and complete that circuit and make that LED come on, which seems kind of like magic. How can my fingers make an LED come on? The human body is conductive, so your hands are conductive. Not as conductive as metal and not as conductive as the ink in our notebooks, but you do have the ability to transfer current from one place to another. Bringing back our multimeter, let's test the resistance between my two fingers. According to my multimeter, the resistance between my two fingers is about two mega ohms. If you remember our previous video on resistance, two mega ohms is equivalent to two million ohms. When we had a resistor of 1 million ohms in our circuit, our LED did not light up at all. So what's happening here? If we take a look at our circuit, we can see that this side is a loop. If we replace our transistor with a switch and turn the switch on, which closes our circuit, our LED comes on. Our transistor can close the loop like a switch if it receives a small positive current to the base. When I put my fingers in the circuit, a current flows from the positive side of the battery and through my fingers. Because of the two mega ohm resistance of my fingers, only a small amount of current actually gets to the base of the transistor. But that current is enough to trigger the transistor and close the circuit. I'm gonna build a small custom circuit that will utilize a trigger current and a transistor to tell me when to water a plant. To test the soil moisture content for my plant, I'm gonna test the soil's resistance. To do that, I'm going to use these two paper clips as electrodes. Let's turn on our multimeter, set it to resistance, and measure the resistance of our soil. The multimeter still says OL, which means that the resistance of the soil is more than the multimeter can read. The maximum it can read is displayed up here, which is 20 mega ohms or 20 million ohms. With the electrodes for my plant connected to my circuit instead of my multimeter, I'm going to use this circuit to test whether my plant is happy, whether my plant has enough water. If I push the test button, my LED does not come on. The reason for that is that the resistance from my plant is so high, more than 20 mega ohms, that the current coming out is not high enough to trigger my transistor. When we water our plant, we can see that our resistance is only eight kilo ohms. So let's connect our plant back to our circuit and test it with wet soil. When I push my test button, current flows from the positive side of my battery through my button, which is now closed, past my LED and into my plant. The resistance of my plant is now low enough that enough current flows out of the negative side into the transistor and closes the transistor. With my transistor closed, my loop is closed and my LED comes on. It's cool when we can use an electrical circuit like this to make our lives easier or to automate a task. Now, every time I wanna know if my plant needs water, all I have to do is come by and hit my test button. Thanks to CircuitScribe for sponsoring this series of educational videos. All of the components in this video are available for sale on the CircuitScribe website. Use code BURBOWIEMAKERS to get 15% off. Also on the website is troubleshooting help if you're having trouble with your pen or any of your components, and you can sign up for their live classes. I'm Ms. Burbawi. Tune in next time to learn about some different circuit structures.